All right. Uh, Emmett, can we please have a one word prompt to kick us off here? Uh, hi. Love it. <laughs> here we go. Three, two, one. So are we talking like, you know, out of your mind? Some of that good, good. That uh, devil's cabbage. Is yeah. That, uh... No, devil is very appropriate. Oh, it is. Wow, I didn't mean to go there, but <laughs> hold on. We can't get to that right away. Which I'm very excited to see what CJ thought of this. But hold on one second. Hey, welcome to the Overtalking Podcast with your hosts, Ken and CJ. Say hi, CJ. Hi, CJ. This is the show where we talk over TV shows and movies as chosen by our guests. And this week we watched When Evil Lurks. Oh, boy. Yeah. It I, certainly I does. I mentioned this on the podcast before. And uh, yeah. one of our guests actually chose it, which I never expected. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You want to introduce our guest right off the bat, Steve? Yes. Uh, oh, boy. You know this guy from his solo work, from the band Stuck Out Here, from Pew Pew Pew. It's Canada's sweetheart, Emmett O'Reilly. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> And if you don't know me from that, you might know me from the podcast, too. That's right. It's three right. disappearances on this very show. Yeah. If you like Final Destination, listen back to that one. I don't want to talk too much about it yet, but, like, I didn't realize how big of a horror fan you were. Like, I feel like this is a movie that not a lot of people know about or, like, only, like, horror heads, like, are talking about. So how did how did you find out about it? Like, are you a big horror fan overall? I am a bit of a nut admittedly uh, like i love horror movies um this one came up because so i was doing like are you guys on letterboxd you must be right yes 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 yeah okay cool i'll have to follow you guys i haven't really like taken advantage of the social media aspect of it very much but i got an account because i was like oh i want to keep track of the movies i'm watching or whatever and i found this challenge so this is like mid-august or whatever and uh, someone had made up a challenge of, like, watch 100 new horror movies, new to you horror movies, by Halloween. So, like, in 92 days, nice. I guess it was August 1st to Halloween. Wow. So I had to dig pretty deep, right? Because I already love watching horror movies. And, and that was one of the ones, I think it was, like, the 98th movie that I watched. So it was, like, pretty late in the game, too. But eventually found it. And it's it's funny that you you bring it up as, like, a you know horror heads kind of knowing it i got home from like like i feel like it's making a lot of year-end lists like a lot of buzz mm -hmm. is kind of building around this one in in certain mm -hmm. circles and like i watched it while we were on the road like really close to halloween obviously because it was you know right around that time when i was finishing up that challenge and uh i got home from the tour like early november and uh, a friend was over and uh she had seen it at a film festival and kind of just wow. brought it up as like wow this was a movie that really blew my mind that i think you would really like so uh it's it's making the rounds for for whatever reason and i i felt really lucky to uh stumble onto it anyway dang yeah. nice yeah you put me to shame i every year for october i want, try to watch a horror movie a day but you did a hundred horror movies leading up to halloween that is that is extra awesome it's it's hard like that's the thing i i would love to say yeah. i'll do it again but even watching one per day in in October would be really hard, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a lot exactly. of movies in general. It's just a lot. Yeah. yeah, when you got other stuff going on too, like having the time to sit down and watch a full length movie every day, it's it's difficult. Oh my god! And and I thought it would be easier, like being in the van. I could download it onto my phone or whatever, mm. and we. we I was like, oh, yeah, I'll pop one on in the van. But, of course, in the van, you're, like, chatting and you're, you know, listening to the radio. Mm -hmm. So, like, even if you have headphones on, it's like, uh, the vibe, like, isn't really right for watching horror movies because we're listening to, like, Red Hot Chili Peppers or something in the background. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, but made it, anyway, just by the skin of my teeth. Dang. Nice. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should do that next year. CJ, do you want to do that with me? <laughs> no, no, I don't. No. <laughs> CJ, were you? Did this one scare you bad? How did you feel about this one? It's funny you should mention that. I, I actually happened to uh, have my reaction when Emmett told me his Ooh. pick, and it, and it okay. sounded a little like this. <laughs> Just very scared and frightened. Uh, no, this this one I would say is more. Uh, it's more the suspense. It's just like you're kind of on edge the entire time. There's not really like. Yeah. Like jump scare. There's like a couple There's jumps, a couple. I would say, but like, I don't think, I don't categorize them in the typical like cheap 
jump scary and where it's just like super quiet and then something pops out. It's like, no, stuff is happening. And then you're like, it really like hits you and you're even more, it's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, this was, it was it's intense. Like, it's like constant like dread yeah. throughout the whole movie that makes it really good. But yeah, also like adds to everything else that's going yes. on. That Just anxious, just like tense sure. the whole time. And it doesn't start like, low either you know like no. it starts with gunshots that's yeah. the first yeah. thing here in the movie you know you're thrown into it in what is it called in media res or whatever like yeah. they don't explain to you what's going on this is just right. the world that they're living in but listen before we get too far into the movie we're gonna take just a quick break and we'll be right back to talk about when evil lurks more on the over talking podcast Hay un embichado en el pueblo. Estás asustando a mi familia. Lo vi con mis propios ojos, estuve con él. Esto va a ser un infierno. ¡No! Uh, and we're back on the Over Talking Podcast, joined once again by Pew Pew Pew's Emmett O'Reilly, and we are talking Hello. about when evil lurks. Uh, before we talk about more about that, though, we need to get into what this movie's about. So, Emmett, we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock for you to describe for someone who's not yet seen when evil lurks. What it's all about. Oh, my God. And there's a lot. <laughs> Ready, yeah. go. So two brothers uh, hear gunshots, go to explore in the morning. It's at night when they hear the gunshots. Uh, they find a, a dead body cut up, really destroyed, like not looking good. They find a briefcase nearby with a picture of a lady in it that lives nearby. They go to the lady's house. They find out her son has That's been excellent. possessed uh, and is sort of rotting away. There are certain rituals oh, around how to dispose three, of two, possessed people, and they do them all one. improperly. Time. That is not enough time to explain what is going on in this movie. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. Yeah, that was like, what, the first 15 minutes, maybe? Yeah. Um, that got yeah, they, it anyway, but like, th then it goes. You know, that's how it starts. <laughs> right. Yeah, the whole thing is like this. In this world, possessions are like somewhat commonplace. Like, this is not the first possessed person that they've come across like this is a there's like a whole business around getting rid of these possessed people and there's like rules around how to do it you can't just kill them or you can't even exercise them on your own there's like i don't know specific things you got to do otherwise it spreads yeah and that's kind of what happens there's an occupation called the cleaner those are the people that are supposed to like come by and clean yeah. the demon oh man pretty cool right <laughs> yeah i do like that it much better than the typical, like, a priest coming by and saying, yeah, and with a Bible and being like, all right, get out of there. That's what I like about this movie specifically is, like, it's its its own whole world. Like, it, it's its own whole, like, backstory, and these people are just living in it, and they're just trying to make their way through it, but they don't really make the best choices, and you get to see all of the awfulness that comes along with that. I hadn't really uh, thought about that either, but that's something kind of cool. Like, it's it involves demons without really being religious in any way. There's no yeah, real right. religious tones to it at all, you know? But uh, still very clear, like, spiritual, you know, unnamed, like, spiritual belief. And, uh, you know, there's there's that kind of a vibe to it. But, yeah, that's kind of cool that they achieve such an effect. That's a good point. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about, like, the, the quote-unquote exorcism. They don't call it that. They call it cleansing or whatever i don't know yeah but, cleaning um yeah. it's just like special instruments they have it's not like crosses or holy water or anything like that it, yeah. it's specifically something else I, um, in fact the one religious point or like the one reference to even the churches and stuff is a woman saying that her and her husband ran a church and that they were frauds and that they like took right. advantage of people <laughs> And I was like, that is a perfect representation of churches. Oh, my God. That's, uh, that's wow. What a movie. Yeah. 
that okay that is because you brought it up that was my one little like something missing from the movie that i wanted to see was i wanted to see how that contraption worked because we just get like (laughs) this woman just has this briefcase with like all these contraptions and gadgets and a gear and copper pipes and stuff and i was like what the fuck is this thing and then we know we don't get to actually see it being used I I agree. I I wanted to see it happen, and also maybe kind of leads me to my wish, which is I hope they make a sequel at some point because I yeah. feel like there's a lot more to this world uh, yeah. that can be explored. Um, but you know, at the same time, like I I think that would have taken away from the kind of the whole point of the movie, which is like it's it's not going to go the way that you want it to go. Like yeah. it's it's never meant to be resolved correctly. These people are not making the correct choices. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I And I say that knowing that I'm sure if they did show you how it worked, it would be lame. So it's good that they did it. <laughs> but it just True. like, I was so, it, I guess it shows that like I was invested in being like, yeah, how does that work? Like show, I want to know all the rules of this universe we're in of like, how this works because that was they don't give you all of them you know and you get like bits and pieces as you go through the movie like the grandma talking to uh santino or the the little kid in the car and like telling him about the song or whatever and like you know you you know learn about the cleaner pretty early or whatever but like everybody just kind of knows and so they sort of say their little bit and that's sort of how I guess we're expected to like pick up the rules, you know, and it's a it, I loved it. I love that as like a way of storytelling. But it, it did kind of leave some like, you know, open ended questions and, and like, yeah, I, uh, I would love to see like all this stuff in action. I'd love to get more of that woman's backstory that they they went to stay with because she clearly like knew what was going on, yeah. you know. Yeah, but maybe a prequel then. That'd maybe. Be cool. Ooh, right. Yeah. Wow. That would be good. I did, yeah, I did like that too. The The mother is sort of explaining to a young child and like us, the viewers of these seven rules you have to follow to not get possessed. And I, yeah, I found that that was very interesting that by the time that happens, it's like halfway through the movie. Like we know demons are a thing, they exist, they get possessed, but we don't know pretty much anything else until like she's explaining it to a child. I thought that was pretty interesting too. It's not like minute five. Okay, here's the universe. Here's how this works. Here's what we're right. going to do. You got like little pieces of it. Like we know some stuff that's explained to us early on. Like you can't, the the main awful character that they're trying to dispose of or clean or whatever is, a, they call it a rotted. And we learn that you can't just kill them. Otherwise that, brings forth this demon that's within it into the real world is like a physical embodiment of a, of a demon. So you can't just kill them and you can't use like guns around them. We find that out because there's this goat that gets possessed through them moving this rotted and they, Oh my God, does someone want to talk about that scene? Cause that is, that is one of my favorite scenes of this movie. Definitely did not see that. What what do you think of this? (laughs) That was that. I think that was sort of the tone setting moment for me of (laughs) like what the movie was going to be. So yeah, they're on a farm. It's this uh, like man and woman. Uh, The woman is pregnant. She starts screaming and pointing at this goat where then where it's implying that this goat is possessed. The dude starts kind of like panicking. He was very emotional and takes out a gun and is like holding it at the goat and then finally pulls the trigger. But we have, we, we know at that point, that's not the proper way to like dispose of them. So then instantly the woman, the the like wife behind him kills him because now he is possessed. And then the worst part with an ax turns the ax on herself. And takes it to the face multiple yeah. times. Too many times. Was, yeah. <laughs> was was the husband possessed or was she just like immediately no. possessed after? I don't know. I assumed it was like it went from the goat to the husband. That's what I thought that he got possessed, but okay. yeah. I thought that was kind of like the transference. Like the goat was possessed, oh, he killed the goat, so it goes to him, and then like she had to kill him. 
So it goes to her. And it goes to and her. So she yeah. kills herself. That's the thing, though. Like we don't we don't know the rules. Like we don't know exactly what's yeah. going on, and that's what's cool about it. Is like what just happened in this scene oh, is wild. That was intense. Yeah, and that's not too far into the movie. No, no, not at all. Uh, and this this goat too. Like it doesn't really show us what it's doing yeah. to uh, to prompt any like mistrust <laughs> or or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, but then. Right, like this is the part where I was like, "Oh, this goat!" Like it, so he's pointing the gun at it, and it walks right up to it until the barrel is right against its forehead, and it's just bad in a way and stuff. And I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like they, they don't like that freaked me out a lot. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, the goat willingly walking Ooh. towards the gun pointed at his face and being like, "Do it! I dare you!" Essentially, so ah. good. Yeah, I love it. Getting goosebumps just talking about it. It was quite uh, shiver inducing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you guys do this all the time. I can't, I can't well, like in my free time feel this way it's, for a hundred days in a row. It's exhilarating. <laughs> I don't know. It's like you go skydiving and you get that kind of rush, you know, except I'm sitting on my couch and not doing anything and eating popcorn. I was watching. Okay. Have, have you guys heard of the core? It's like, oh, yeah. It's like the the one where they like drill to the. It's it's not no, a movie. Not what I thought. It's, okay, uh, and and there is probably a movie called The Core, actually. But so, do you guys have Shutter? Are you familiar with Shutter? That is how I know about this movie and how I saw it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Give uh, take it. Take a look for The Core. It's the core. a show. Okay. It's like a talk show, essentially. Really, really cool. Uh, it's all like horror themed, and they have a lot of like horror guests or whatever. Anyway, point point I'm getting to is like. This uh, this one episode, they're interviewing the guys from Spectre Vision, um, and one of them talks about how like it's this ability to sort of confront death from your couch. You you feel hmm. these feelings. You you your brain like screams at you that you are in danger, but you, or sorry, your your body screams at you that you are in danger, but your brain the whole time knows that you are safe. And uh, so I don't know. It, it's uh, maybe there's something to that. Is like, I thought that was kind of interesting, like as to why people keep coming back to horror or like why it's so fascinating to people. It's because it's like a safe look beyond if that, yeah. you know? And CJ, you didn't get that? I think it's all because you guys are sick in the head. That's what it is. <laughs> That's okay, possible great. too, you know? <laughs> yeah. Could be. I mean, after all these movies, probably. I don't know. I, I read an article that people who watch a lot of horror movies are better prepared for like real life tragedy. So there's some benefits there, probably. I don't know. It certainly made me a lot more paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a benefit. Which, uh, sure. you know, for better or for worse, maybe I'll need right? that paranoia yeah. someday. You see a goat looking you the wrong way, you know, uh, I yeah. know what to do. Never going to look at gun. goats the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not to mention, okay, here was the thing that I found, not to jump too much on this movie or whatever, but the thing that I found, about this movie was a great uh, horror trope revisited really creepy kids mm, god mm. yeah the little one with the hammer yeah i mean there's yeah. a couple right yeah. the i guess the first one is the one with um the oh man i don't know the exact relation but it follows these two brothers and they one goes to pick up part of his family and through a remarriage they have a daughter anyway she gets attacked by a possessed dog and then the girl becomes possessed and then is super creepy. And uh, yeah. and then at the end of the movie, then there was, of course, a ton of kids in that school. That really that was scary. something else this movie made me think of. Like, I feel like there's there's a line in media of like killing an animal is like you are crossing the line and that is going to put off so many people. And then killing children, I feel like, is the other big one to like put off a big group of people of your audience. Yes. Yeah. I don't, this one has both, I guess in but, the same scene. <laughs> yeah. It's oh God. or the same sequence, at least, you know, yeah. that I'm not uh, in, in my free time. I'm not used to watching those things a lot. So that was very <laughs> jarring to see for me. Yeah. Quite intense. That I, I think that was the scene of the movie for me like when they went to his ex's house and everything that sort of went oh, down there yeah, until yeah. the incident with the truck that that was 
basically when I was just like, this movie is absolutely bananas. Like <laughs> I, I can't, what a, what a shifting, uh, swirl of, I don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> that, yeah. I agree. I think, I think that was definitely the, I mean, the go was probably the turning point for me in the movie, but that alone, the, the whole scene at the house with the dog and all of that definitely opened it up to me that like, Oh, okay. This, this is like everywhere. Like, the the pit bull scene is what I was referencing earlier when I was thinking more of like yeah. jump scares. Like that is like right. there are there it's already tense. Like they're screaming at each other because it's a he's like trying to get the family together and go go go. And then all of a sudden that happens. You're just like Jesus Christ. Like that really got me. And that that's kind of what I was talking about with like these these guys are not making the right choices all the way along. Like they know that this thing spreads and the yeah. first thing they do is go to the people they care about the most yeah. with all of this shit all over them. That is what spreads it basically. And I mean, we spoiled the hell out of this movie, but and, you know, at the end of the movie, these two brothers lose literally everything they have. Yes. I don't know. I don't know what to exactly take away from that other than it's just a crushing movie, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Just interesting. Yeah, the main sort of protagonist loses everyone he cares about by the end of the movie. It, yeah, like, in the guess, worst possible ways. Yeah. yeah, is the message like be careful? <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah, does this have a message? <laughs> what? what were, yeah, what were your yeah, takeaways? What, what from would this? the message be? Like, just follow the rules. Like I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. And and like there's something that okay so i was like trying to write a bit about this movie and i called the brothers bumbling at one point <laughs> yeah and it's like i had to think about that for a while because they're definitely not like your traditional representation of like bumbling characters right you know? so i wonder if it's more like the message is something about like thinking you know best or letting your pride get in the way or like I didn't get a lot of that from these characters, I guess, but like, I don't know. Did I, maybe I missed Yeah, I, I don't know if it's, if it's so much, much like a message or like a, a lesson as it is just like commentary on like, if this was really happening in real life, everyone's going to like make mistakes when they're going through it. Like think about like how many mistakes you make just with normal mundane things in your life that like you might fuck up times that by t- 20,000 when like demons are just normal yeah. like shit's gonna hit the fan real quick uh just for ev- your average everyday joe i think there's something um, there for sure that like no matter what you sort of like plan logically even if you're there are these rules like emotions are a yes, thing and you are a it. human so it's your emotions will take over like that part of your brain is gonna even though like yeah he's on the phone with his possessed wife or whatever he knows that it's like not her but she's saying some very hurtful things and it like destroys him to hear those even though he like logically knows that's not actually her saying those things but yeah like that would suck to hear and have to yeah i think you're exactly right i think i think it's that we're all human and that emotions yeah exactly what you said overtake logic sometimes and I would say you most can shout at your screen all you want at horror movies that you know don't go in that door don't don't leave the group alone but like yeah when emotions come into play and it's not just a, a dumb teen who's horny or whatever uh it makes for a good movie so yeah yeah huh. and that uh, sorry maybe this is a silly connection but i feel like that kind of makes the title make a little bit of sense to me i struggled a little bit with the title cuz uh i wanted it to be where evil lurks for some reason yeah, you know, hmm. when evil lurks didn't really quite grab me as well, but yeah, combined with what you're saying, yeah, when evil lurks, people lose their heads, people get emotional. It's yeah, like I, th- a, I think it is a, that maybe you know, that's like it's that when evil lurks, like if this, then that. When evil yeah, lurks right. is there, then these things happen. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Interesting. We cracked it, guys. Good job. <laughs> I, I'm happy to uh, happy to put that to bed. That was yeah. There you go. Um, before we get to trivia, I just want to either give you, Emmett, another recommendation for a movie, or maybe you've already seen it, but this, uh, the writer-director of this, Damien Rugna, I believe is how you pronounce it, wrote and directed another movie called Terrified. Have you seen that? I don't think so. I'm writing it down now. Okay. Terrified. 2017, 
uh, another foreign language movie uh, because he's from Argentina. But that was very scary. And I think this is right in line with that. So if you like this, check out Terrified. I think you would really in, enjoy it. And CJ, avoid oh, it at all costs. That's on Shutter as well. I recognize the, the cover, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. That weird guy with the face that split open or whatever. I don't I don't know exactly what it is, but Okay. Super I'm, scary. I'm so psyched. That'll be great. Really great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one one really quick one. I okay, so this this movie, like, in my opinion, is in a good way is not your sort of traditional like horror movie that I expect, not being one that often seeks these out. But uh, Emmett, a movie that we covered on the show that stuck with me for like a month after is this movie called Super Dark Times, also in 2017. Pretty more like low budget, uh, but I couldn't stop thinking about it for like weeks afterwards. It it is it is it again like you're just tense and anxious and like it just builds and oof doesn't even slightly ring a bell. That sounds really cool. It's it's maybe horror. It's definitely more suspense for yeah. sure. Oh, the ending is probably yeah. It's it's horror. Yeah, it's it's one hundred percent horror. Uh, <laughs> that's a good movie. Definitely check that out too. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Thank you. I, I'm so psyched to check these out. Yeah. Ooh, can I recommend one to you guys? Please. Please. This one, I, I found it as a a part of this challenge as well. Actually, you've maybe seen it if you have Shutter because I I just sort of it was one that was on Shutter and I decided to try it out. Tigers are not afraid. Oh, I've been meaning to watch it, but no, I have not seen it yet. Can't recommend it enough. Okay. Uh, it's, again, like, kind of towing that line of, like, is it a horror movie exactly? There's, like, a supernatural element, but that's not, like, the scary part. It's uh, mm-hmm. sort of about these kids navigating, like, the drug wars in Mexico. Um, can't recommend it enough. Really, really cool movie. I think you guys would both like it, actually. Okay. Cool. It is a little scary, but not, like, you know, not too scary. I remember starting to watch it and then I didn't realize it was foreign language and I just wasn't in the mood for subtitles at the point, but I, you know what? I had nothing going on tonight, so I might throw it on. Ooh, uh, I think you'll I mean, really like it. That's been one that's on my list for a while. So I'm definitely gonna, gonna check it out. Awesome. All right. One, one more for you. It's another shutter movie. It's called uh, speak no evil. Oh wait. I know that. Button. Have you seen it? I think so. I can't remember okay. exactly what it is. Hang on. No, Another no. foreign language movie, of course. I, th- I think it's Danish. I don't want to say too much about it. it it's uh, it's no, a, I I haven't seen this. A family with a kid goes to visit another family in in like a neighboring country, and uh, stuff stuff happens. And there's since we were trying to figure out what this movie was saying, that movie is saying a very clear message once you get to the Ooh. end. So that movie's also for some reason being remade, even though it came out last year. It's being remade for American audiences with the guy from Split. What's that guy's name? Oh, um, I don't know if I know his name, but wow. Yeah, Dune? I don't know. Blumhouse is remaking. I have no idea why, because it's perfectly fine on its own. I would say watch the original because it's, cool. you know, the source. But James McAvoy? Yeah. James McAvoy. Yep. Oh, it. okay. What a pull for James McAvoy. Split of all movies he's been in. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I don't know. Could have said literally anything else. X-Men. Yeah, yeah, there's been a lot of stuff. It's Magneto. Oh, this guy. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was in I was in the horror space, so I think that's why Split yeah. came up. All right. Let's let's move on because it's time for Hey, did you do that? That's right. I already said it, but for new listeners, this is the trivia portion of our show where we pit our guest and CJ head to head to see who knows the most about what we watched. Emmett, CJ, are you two ready? The I'm ready. I'm I kind of forgot about the trivia section, so ooh, I'm nervous, but I'm ready. Uh, CJ, you crushed it last time, <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. First question: According to the writer director Daniel Rugna, what inspired this film? This is multiple choice. Was it A. COVID, B. Pesticides, C. The plague, or D. Uh, cancer diagnosis in his family? I say oh. COVID. That that's a that seems sort of a one to one, okay metaphor. I meant well, yeah. I, I was also going to say COVID. I think but... you can say COVID as well. Yeah, yeah, fine. yeah. we could choose the same. Sorry, thing. COVID, cancer diagnosis in his family, the plague, and what pesticides. Pesticides, interesting. I think it was COVID. It's such a recent, you know. Yeah, I think COVID. 
Yeah, that would be an interesting and more likely answer, but that's not correct. Uh, apparently, Damien saw some news article about pesticides in his area causing widespread health issues, and uh, huh. that's what inspired him to write the story. No way. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Be careful, I guess. Yeah. All right. So no points yet. Hopefully before we get to the end, someone will get points. But Still time. Right. There's only, only a couple more. Uh, this next one is pretty self-explanatory, but there are seven rules for dealing with the rotted and the possessed in this movie. They don't explicitly say all of them, but they are all hinted at. On IMDb Trivia, someone has listed out what they believe to be the seven rules. I just want you to go back and forth and try to list them, and okay. whoever can list more gets the point, I guess. No uh, electricity. Start. Okay, go. Cool. Well, CJ starts then. All right, Emmett, you're up next. You said no electricity, hey? Yeah. Uh, no using firearms. Okay. Okay. That was the one I knew. <laughs> uh, don't forget the rules. Is that one of the seven ones? No. <laughs> so the brother hits up. Oh. No. Uh, oh wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I got one. I remembered one. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Don't, don't uh, say its name. Like, don't, don't speak. You're like, yes, don't that, name that it. That is one of them. Ooh. Okay. okay. Emma, can you think of another? I think I have one, but I'm. I uh, don't like let it touch you. Don't let it touch your body. Uh, of- not quite. But I'll let that be. Do them no harm, because that's basically. Okay. Kind of touching them. I mean, that's a stretch, but I'm I'm just trying to keep this I going. I appreciate that. <laughs> CJ, can you think of anything else? No, I'm trying to play the the scene in the car in my head, but I can't. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I can't remember what else the grandma was saying. Yeah, some of these I, I can't remember if she actually said this. I mean, she definitely didn't, didn't get through all of them, but I, I'm not sure. Again, this is probably just someone's interpretation, but... The others that I have listed, I mean, you guys are out, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, I can't think of any ideas. I think so. Yeah, I don't think okay. I All right. I think this might be another tie, although maybe CJ should get the point because I think I really gave yeah, him yeah. at that uh, <laughs> that one. Um, I, that's that's fair. I, I'd I'd happily <laughs> give this to CJ. <laughs> okay. So what I got here is uh do not use electric lights, the shadow they cast draw them in. Uh the second one is stay away from animals. I think oh. that's one she said. Oh. Uh, three is do them no harm. Four is take nothing close to them. Did they say that? I, I don't remember that. Um, huh. Five, never say the devil's name. Uh, six, never use a gun on them. And seven, do not fear death. Did they say that one? I don't. Yeah, this is, oh. like, some of this might be bullshit. I don't I, know. They. <laughs> I would say if I were to tweak that last one, it was, it was basically they were just saying like, if you have fears, they're going to play into that and take advantage yeah. of those fears. Okay. Yeah. Where then yeah. I get like most people are afraid of death. So maybe that was that IMDB user's interpretation of that. But I yeah, I don't know. Whatever. And and I guess like that's the you know, for example, um sorry, what's the, the main brother's name? Um Jimmy? Oh, Pedro? The main no, no. Pe- oh. Pedro. Wait, is it Jimmy or Pedro? Pedro. Pedro's the one who has like the family, right? Yeah, Pedro's the yes. one. Yeah, so he's afraid of losing his family or his yeah. family being harmed, and thus everything that happens to him is his family being harmed. So I guess if you're afraid of death, you'll die. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's why that that woman that they go for help was such a badass because she's just like, I don't, I'm not afraid of anything. Let's go, let's do this. Yeah, thing. yeah, she was awesome. Yeah. All right, so CJ's on the board with one point. Um, you know, a very weak point, but we'll we'll give it to him. Don't insult my point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next up, uh, one of my favorite questions for horror movies: What is the body count for this movie? And I have some caveats. Ooh, uh, this includes animals and off-screen deaths, meaning we see the bodies, but we didn't see them actually get killed. Okay. This oh, might, this might take us. Yeah, second. that definitely. <laughs> I think I have my answer. Okay. I think I'm there. Okay. I think 16. Wow. Okay. I had eight. <laughs> wow. Not even close. There must be some animals or something I'm not thinking of. Well, the one that I decided at the last minute to throw in was people under the stage. I counted oh, about three you're or right. four people under the yeah. stage. Yeah. I didn't count any of those. You know? Yeah. But that's the thing is, like, I couldn't remember 
for exactly how many people were under there. So that's okay. Yeah. So one of you is closer. Neither of you are quite right. Yeah. Uh, Emmett, you're closest. The answer I have again for mine to be trivia is 13. Oh, okay. And you know, the reason there's so many caveats is because like people get reanimated and yeah. then killed again. So I didn't count Sabrina's second death. I just counted her death as one. Yeah. Okay. I didn't and then, count yeah, the, the, the goat and the dog. Um, I did not count the daughter because we don't see her killed. Actually, we don't see any kids. Oh, yeah, because she's like jumping around after the truck yeah. thing. That's why yeah, like, she's just possessed. She, but she's yeah, not she dead. should be dead, but is not. Right. right. So here's what I got uh, the unnamed cleaner. I didn't even count him. He's the first body we see. I missed that one. <laughs> yes. Uh, the goat. Uh, right, yeah. That one dude whose wife kills him. Yeah. The wife. Yeah. Uh, the dog, whose name is Roger, apparently. I missed that. Roger, yeah. yeah the... Sabrina, the, the wife mm-hmm. uh, who gets reincarnated. Uh, Santino, whose skull is ripped open and brain ripped out by Sabrina's reanimated corpse. Yep. Oh yeah! Oh, I forgot about that. That was she's eating his brain, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, three unnamed people killed by several possessed children off screen. Their yeah. bodies seen later. So that's probably what you were thinking of under the stage. Under yeah. the stage, there. Yeah. Um, Murta, the the cleaner lady, uh, yeah. bashed five right. times in the head. Uh, Ariel, the dude who was the rotted guy that they've been yeah. chasing around, I counted in. Mama Elena, who was killed off screen, yeah, yeah, uh, her by Earl's brother and uh, Pedro's mother. Oh, you know what? I think it should be fourteen because uh, Pedro's mother was eaten alive by Jer or whatever you say it off screen, uh, and then doesn't he kill Jer as well? So maybe that's fourteen. We I don't. Think yeah, Jer we don't. Still lives. Yeah, Jer's alive. Okay. Yeah, he. Like, he's just possessed. Yeah, but he's I think it's okay. implied that that's probably what they're going to have to do, and that's why he's like so sad. But yeah, I don't think we ever gotcha. like hear or see it or anything. okay. Well, probably a good mm-hmm. idea not to kill more possessed people after. Yeah, you know. <laughs> that would be a lot to have in the movie. Yeah. yeah, that reminds me that most of this is over the course of a day. Like the sun rises when yeah. the movie ends, and so like all yeah. of that was like one night. Hell of a day. I didn't really consider that. But you're right. Yeah. I guess you're right. Oh god. my god! All right. Potentially final question. Stand what up. is the Rotten Tomatoes Tomato Meter score in percentage? Just closest because you are tied. And to make this fair, I want you both using the Zoom chat to text me you, what your answer is, so you don't influence each other's uh, oh. higher or lower kind of bullshit that could happen there uh Basically, so this yeah, is the critic cool. score on ron tomatoes in percentage the critic score okay i messed this up last time too right yes. not the right right not the audience this is the actual critics and their overall thing okay all right we have our winner so cj what'd you say i said 89 percent okay wow. and it? i said 73 percent Ooh, and Emmett, you are not correct, sorry. No uh, way. CJ is closest. It's actually completely certified fresh. It's 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Uh, wow. This is one of the I'm highest so happy horror that. movies of the last year. I had um, no faith in the critics. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's highly, highly praised uh, critically. Um, yeah, but CJ, that makes you our winner. Congratulations. <laughs> Just, uh, uh, second time in a row, you keep crushing Emmett over here. <laughs> I'll have to practice next time. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's tough. It's crushed tough. by one single point. <laughs> yeah, I know. And also, one of those points you got was kind of kind of weak. So I don't know. it was a very strong hey, point. Stop insulting my point. Even the squeakers count. You know, even the garbage goals count. That's for right. sure. Um, just for fun, we were talking about letter letterbox before. What do you think the letterbox average rating is for all of its users? So hmm. this is out of five. Uh, it's a single point decimal score out of five. Just, just the vibe I'm getting from like the way both of you are talking about it, it doesn't seem like this is like super popular, which means most people that are watching this are probably like seeking it out because they like these types of movies. So I think it's probably like a 4.1 or something, probably over the <laughs> four star. I was going to say maybe even higher, like 4.4. 4. 4. 4.6? 4. 
Wow. Crazy? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is. <laughs> it is crazy. I actually, we've, we've only started uh, recently doing the letterbox scores at for averages. So I actually haven't really looked at a lot of movies for how that kind of yeah. averages out. I think it's pretty hard to get a high number on letterbox average score from what I can tell. 3.6 uh, is what most was what people have done for ooh, this movie. I was uh, a full, um, full point up, which is surprising to me because I, I, yeah. uh, I would have thought it'd be higher considering the the critical acclaim of this one. But mm-hmm. anyway, but I think that leads us to uh, our ratings. Emmett, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate When Evil Lurks for you? I just want, on the record, for the listeners, Emmett was bobbing his head along to the ratings song. <laughs> Everyone loves it. I, I had, I, a, a touring I, musician I, 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 found I, that catchy, so there we go. That's right. Did you guys record that? <laughs> I, 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 me and... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm impressed. Love it. Love it. Mwah. You. Um, <laughs> you know what? I was going to say 9 out of 10. But I have no wow. reason to not give it 10 out of 10. Wow. I'm feeling, I'm feeling so generous and positive today, and I love this movie. Let's do Dang. it. Dang. Let's let's nice. make it rain, you know? Wow. Absolutely. Love that. So I had fun. I love the movie. That's all. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I'm very curious to see what CJ is going to rate this movie. Yeah. Uh, for me... I horror is not my thing. Uh, it's just I'm a big scaredy cat. That's not what I, I spend my free time doing. However, it would be so hard to say this is not a good movie. This is just objectively a well-made movie. Again, not something I will ever watch again or see out because it's too intense for me. But I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I I would recommend it to fellow scaredy cats like myself. Um, it's it's a horror movie, but not in the sense that I think most people think of them. It's not, you're like cheesy. They're just in a dark house and it's thunder strikes and a, a spooky guy pops out of a closet or whatever. Probably like a seven and a half. I, I had a good time Whoa. with this. Uh, wow. It's, I would love, they really, I don't, I, I guess we won't spoil the actual ending, but, they kind of set it up for a sequel. I I probably would watch the sequel if that came out or a prequel. That that woman who seems to know what's going on, they absolutely should make a movie around her story. She seems fascinating. Oh. That was a great idea, Ken. Uh, you should e- write a letter to the guy who made the movie and let him know that they should do that. Please, please do that. I would love that movie. I'm I'm not holding my breath because uh, he has not done anything quite like that yet. But it's early in this dude's career, so you know maybe yeah. I would love that too. I think there's a lot to explore in this world. That wow, I am blown away, CJ, that you gave it that high of a rating. Uh, yeah, it's good. That's probably the highest you've given almost any horror movie on probably. this podcast. <laughs> yeah, incredible. Okay, well I guess it's time for me. Uh, for me, I yeah really really like this movie. Um, I mean, I've, I've mentioned it before on the podcast, so uh, clearly I recommend it. It's really fun talking about it, too, uh, at, at such lengths, because uh, I, I just usually watch it, and then that's it. But uh, this was a lot of fun talking about it. I originally gave it an 8 out of 10 on Letterboxd, so, you know, brought up to a, a 10 scale. But I think I'm going to go, I don't think it's a perfect movie for me. I think it's, you know, not in English, so... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, I actually think the fact that it was in a foreign language added to the kind of creepy factor of it all. Um, yeah, but there's, there's a lot of good things going on for it, uh, for this movie. I, I'm going to give it a nine out of 10 for me. I think it's, it's Dang. really, really strong, uh, well put together stories, just so interesting. And yeah, it, there's a lot that can go from here. Also, I'd love a movie that doesn't have a happy ending in the <laughs> horror space. I love when yeah. everything goes yeah. wrong. Like the yeah. one thing they're trying to prevent happens and that's the ending. Yeah. I love that. Cause that's what I want to see. I want to see the bad thing happen like to the worst possible extent. Yeah. So yeah. Otherwise like, like you know, it, it, it's, I always find it. I mean, obviously there are so many great horror movies that do have kind of like happy endings, but sure. It does kind of rub me the wrong way. It's sort of like, what are you guys trying to do here? Yeah. You know, you trying to inspire fear. Are you trying to make this like a horror movie or are you trying to like toe the line a little bit, you know? Sure. 
Yeah. And I, I get that. And of, of course, I, I don't draw that hard of a line. I do uh, obviously love tons of movies that have happy endings, but it, it's uh, it's something so, I've considered. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it, it makes it harder for, you know, mass appeal if you always are having horror movies that are just total bummers. But uh, you know, yeah. once in a while, it's, nice, it's a nice treat. It's nice to see somebody go there, you know, to not be like afraid yes. to like, be like, no, it's not getting any better, you know? Yeah. Especially for this one, that would be a weird turn if all of a sudden they, like, in the last 20 minutes, like, figured it out. And we're like, we did it. We saved the day. It's like, really? Because you guys have kind of sucked at it so far. (laughs) Like, how did you pull that off? Yeah. (laughs) This was not looking like it was in your cards. No, yeah, not at all. (laughs) Well, I think that's that's about it. Emmett, thank you for for joining us. Uh, Yes, thank you. Genuine pleasure. I really enjoy talking to horror horror movies with you. The pleasure is all mine, you guys. Thank you for asking me to on it again i i love uh talking talking horror movies and talking to you guys so yeah yeah happy to we're definitely gonna have to have you back on uh maybe when you're doing your next hundred uh horror movies in a row you can talk about you some let of me those. know and you just be a Rates. full episode of you just rattling off ratings for all 100 movies <laughs> just like it, it hey this maybe movie take the whole hour, you know? <laughs> i would love that I would honestly love that. CJ would be so bored though. But. Well, I'll send you guys. I actually, uh, a friend of mine writes this like zine, uh, just like a fanzine kind of thing. And I wrote a little article about it. Uh, Ooh. Oh, nice. About doing it. So I can send you guys it if you're interested at all. And I like am to very see interested in it. My top five and my bottom five. Yeah. Please, cool. please send us okay. that. That'd be awesome. I'll, I'll send it over uh, at, at some point here. Remind me if, I, if you don't get it in the next day or so. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again. Do you have anything you want to plug at the end here? I I think I'm going to have some um, like solo music coming out this year. So hell yeah, plug for like tentative, unscheduled solo music release. Nice, but uh, you know, not 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 a lot of firm dates to plug. I would say, but I think it's going to be a busy year. That music and and he's touring a lot, and and there's going to be a new uh, respire record, which is the other band I play trumpet in, and. Uh, I want to get stuck out here recording again. Lots, lots of music stuff. Anyway, so the the plugs are non-specific, but uh, uh, keep your eyes peeled, I guess. <laughs> Hell yeah! Where, where can people find you? I guess maybe like a good jumping-off point is like if you find me on Instagram at Emmett O'Reilly one three eight, and then and you can find like all the bands from there. Basically, that's uh, usually where I like update news and 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 post the most, I guess. So. Yeah, I, I I should take the whole thing a little bit more seriously and maybe get a website or something. But um, eh. yeah, Someday. that works honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's fine. Great. Well, thank you again, um, CJ. What do we have to plug at the end? Here? You can find the show on all of the platforms at Over Talking Pod. That's Over Talking P O D. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. You can check out clips of probably this very episode. I'll make little videos and put them out there for the world to see. Uh, or of our previous episodes. You can go to our website, overtalkingpod.party. It's a real website. You can type in the word Emmett, find his previous appearances. Email us at overtalkingpod at gmail.com. Call or text us at usacat1591. And I don't know if you remember last time, uh, but this is something we do at the end of every episode. Is this dumb little bit, but uh, I mean, it's not a bit. It's real. Uh, it's very real and here. serious. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the overtalking overlords have arrived. There are guests and otherworldly landlords who show up at the end of every episode to remind me to remind you if you like the show, please go on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and rate and review. Reviews are what help people find this podcast. Also, we spend no money in advertising. So if you like the show, please tell a friend and spread the word. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And with that weekly incantation, they are gone. <laughs> this, man, it really it doesn't make sense with the rest of the show like it just doesn't it doesn't really make sense to keep doing this 350 episodes later but we we're still doing it so it's it's nice though it's a you know a, a tradition charm of sorts yeah sure sure yeah, yeah. it just goes to show we're being forced to do this okay this isn't our choice these these people right. are gonna kill us if we don't make the right. show right. <laughs> <laughs> you're always excused at that point you know Whatever exactly happens. right it's not on us it's on <laughs> the over talking overlords all right and as we say at the end of every single episode vaya con dios okay bye <laughs> bye <laughs> this episode of the over talking podcast was produced by ken and cj edited by cj 
This week's special guest was Emmett O'Reilly from Pew Pew Pew. Music by Justin Peters. Logo by Nate Richards. Check out Nate's work on Instagram at Nate Richards Designs.